a gas powered pumper on it so we can pump and roll. You know, the one that we have now, we have to be stationary. This one here is going to have that added feature to it. Uh, like I said, we're replacing an aging truck that's 30 years old. That's been kind of the rule of thumb when they get to be that age, we replace them. Uh, any other questions? I mean, there's. Is that a med chip? No. No, it'll be a PTO. It'll be an automatic. The, one we, the last one we had was a uh, 10 speed. This one here will be an automatic. What kind of dollars are we deciding <laughs> Steve, what do you think? A little over three. About red one. Still going to be red? You bet. You can read just the old one. The old one? Oh, there's, we'll sell it. Uh, we've got some ideas of maybe some other departments that maybe want the chassis off of it. But you can't sell it like to a rural. I'm, I'm assuming they'll pass specs. They could be sold to the rural department. Yeah. I was uh, someone was saying the other day that they passed some new regulations. Uh, ISO for the rural departments, they have to have uh, pumpers that will pump more than 500 gallons a minute, and a lot of them had 500 gallon minute pumpers. So this one here would be maybe it'd be a benefit to some of those those guys if they needed to help with their ISO rate. Don't know a whole lot about that. It was just something that brought up in conversation. Once you get bids, how long does it take them to build the trucks? No, we were talking about that today. You know, it could be six, seven months. Depends on their load. You know, what they've got. You know, before us. How many places bid on this? We were. We'll send it out to probably three, three, four. You know, it depends. Uh, you know, on who's interested. I'm sure that depends on their workload. Yeah, right. so. okay. Anybody else have any questions? While you're here, congratulations on being the got the money all saved up. <coughs> no, we'll be back to ask about that later. <laughs> 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 right, thanks, well, Blake, congratulations thanks, on being a new chief. Yes. And, okay. and I look forward to working with you. And, and, uh, Appreciate Former it. Chief Rub, thank you for all the service that you've given us through the years. How many numbers are behind that three when you were talking about? There are a little bit. I don't think we need a motion right now. We're just going to submit the bid. They've just got to okay. bring us up to speed on what they're probably going to come back and ask for. Okay. And then, yeah. then we'll come up with the money. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A little bit in here. Okay, next is the meeting minutes and appropriations. Did you have something to add? Yeah, I'd like to move the new consent agenda in its entirety. I have a motion that we pass the consent agenda in its entirety. Do I have a second? Yeah. Second. Second by Councilman Trail. Is there any further discussion? No further discussion. Mandy, please take a roll we'll call vote. Kingler? Yes. Peterson? Yes. Luttrell? Yes. Audie? Yes. Miller? Yes. Richard? Yeah. Thank you. Motion period. Next item on the agenda is adjournment. Yeah, can we do it? Without? So moved by Councilman Audi. Second by Councilman Miller. Uh, any further discussion? No further discussion. Those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same. Motion carries. We're adjourned. We'll move into our uh, Workstation. Katie, do you have anything at this time? No. Okay, thank you. Go ahead. Uh, further. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, just. Thanks. So, you want to talk about the, the new lease here? We'll get that as the first. Okay. Um, Let's, go ahead. Just so everyone is aware of what <clears throat> what's going on, there is a copy of the previous lease in your packet that was signed in 2010. Um, that lease is sort of unique. It went for about a year and a half, and then the school was to notify the city if they wanted to renew it, which to me is very hard to keep track of. We have a new superintendent and all that. so. Um, in a, a recent meeting, we decided that we needed to update the lease. Um, there were some things in there, some language in there that I just didn't like. Um, 
So I've updated the lease. Um, the, I guess, most important part of the lease is this is not for rent. Um, what they are paying, what the school district pays us for is a reimbursement for utilities. And um, the reason that we don't rent the property is because we don't pay property tax on the property. So um, the, Mandy had run some numbers on approximate cost of um, the utilities for each one of the buildings up there. And um, that's why you see the number increased a little bit to 35,000 versus the 31 in the previous lease. Um, this comes closer to the utility number for um, this particular building. Um, Karen Nimchuk is here and she's provided kind of a, a handout for what the education building is and what they do and the improvements that have been made. Um, a big concern, um, and you'll hear this again when we, when we talk about the daycare um, leases, which we'll be addressing those in December, November or December. Um, because they are also <coughs> ready for renewal, is um, the heating and air issue up there is not good on any of the buildings except for the library, and I think law enforcement's okay. Um, that is something that at some point needs to be addressed. Um, it's either really hot or really cold, and I don't go in the education building as much, but I know the daycare buildings have an issue, and right now the education building has no air conditioning on right now. Um, so that's a concern. We are the landlord. We are required to provide, you know, a suitable environment, and that's not happening right now. Um, you know, they're old buildings, and they're going to probably continue to take lots of upkeep. But um, I don't know. That's a really rough overview. Do you have questions for myself or Karen on the proposed? Yes. As I remember, when we took over the North Campus, we, we decided we were going to send, we were going to lease those buildings out pretty much at cost, right? But exactly. Didn't it turn out to be a little less than cost? Um, yes, which is why the numbers have gone up a little bit. Um, the the number that Mandy came up with for the education building was about thirty eight thousand. But what is it? Natural gas? You can't. No, natural gas. Natural gas. We we can't apply that the natural gas to each building. So she just had to kind of. We, it's a guesstimate, is it 38,000? Uh, for example, the administration building that, sit, that sits there empty is about $21,000 a year. So um, they do cost, but this is very close to what that is, is costing the city. So am I right in thinking that if we do a long-term lease, we're gonna run into the problem of cost adjustments over time? If, if we do a long-term lease, it's gonna be hard for us to guesstimate how much that cost is going to be. So we kind of need to have periodic reviews just to update the cost. Yeah. Both, right? And yeah, and that's why I we went with the five year, which um, the hospice, the port library, that's a five year. Um, the yearly, it's just hard to keep track of because. It, and we also included in those leases new heating units, new air conditioning units, and that type of thing. We didn't, no. And is if, that something we need to take into consideration? We did talk to them uh, a couple years ago. Uh, the problem with that is to do the, all the energy efficient programs that you can take advantage of. Uh, the cost up front was so enormous uh, that neither the school nor us thought that was a great idea at that time. We, we had a pretty extensive um, analysis of how that would work out for us. And, and what they were proposing would save you money, but the payback would be like, you know, 30 years from now, you might you might see that pay off. But the upfront cost for most of that, no matter how you did it, was, was going to be a lot more than we could afford at this time. So. And my how, thought, how long that water is supposed to last up there? Uh, that, it, yeah, yeah, that was put in there new, so I'm not sure what the lifespan was, probably at least you know, 30 years on that. Uh, but they put that in about two years before we took over the facility, so that was almost brand new. Uh, I'm not sure why they did that, but I'm glad they did it. Uh, 
part of the problem is that gentleman mentioned that our boiler has too much capacity. It does. Yeah, they oversized it, which they did almost everything out there. They oversized, and that's just typically what the state does with their with their systems is they they build them for expansion. I guess I'm not sure what they thought was going to happen there, but that is. But no matter what we look at, as far as energy efficiency with windows or ground source heating or whatever, you know, just that upfront cost, which is you know high, and so we didn't feel like we could really move forward with really any of that unless some other source of funding came about. So it comes down to, do you want to upgrade things at all once or slowly? And then is it the school paying for that or is it us paying for that? And that's my thought with the five-year lease was that gives the city and the school five years to think about those issues and how they can be paid for and how we can work together. It's obviously nothing that's going to happen right away, but um, you know, long term, we need to. Both parties probably need to look at that issue. But this gives us a lease. Right now, we don't have a lease at all. Um, I mean, the other one's expired. So um, I don't know, Karen. Do you have any? Anything you want to add? Or? No, I, I think um, what I I what I provided you guys with a thing on the services that we provide there, and also. Um, the, what we've already done to the building as far as improvements inside the building and then the general upkeep for the building just to kind of maybe give you a better idea of what really is going on up there and I would really love it if, if the council would like to come and visit the building I would be happy to give you a tour of the building um, I do think one of the issues that we have with the boiler is um, just in talking with Lynn a little bit and Tim Watts is they don't even make parts sometimes when the boiler breaks down. They don't even make parts to fix it. So I know part of the part of the issue is they're making or making parts, or I don't know how, how that even happens, but or but it's very difficult to fix it when it breaks down. And it does break down quite frequently. So um, we try not to, um, but we do have in the building we do have farm but we do have electric heaters for when the heat doesn't work and we did purchase in room air conditioners that we only put in five rooms to work when the air isn't working because when it's hot it is so hot that um, people with asthma or some of my female staff that are pregnant or our students who are really in a well, it's just best said they're students that so we don't want to get hot and irritated. And so um, those things are our concerns for us and that we work around with that. But it's also um, having those things, we're very cognizant that that does run up the electricity. So we try not to do those things. And we, we have gone through and we have programmed all of our at the thermostats to run it goes in the winter time we turn it goes down after five o'clock at night when we're gone and we, we jump down at night and then on the weekend so we try to maximize those savings for for the city because we do appreciate everything that you've done with the building for us and so we want to be cognizant of not running up those bills so These are very important services that are provided not only to our community but the communities that are surrounding us. I know there's a lot of activity. I noticed at times when I was up there and had a meeting in the library, there was a lot of administrators from other schools and, and stuff. I think you just have a meeting there. It was just kind of impressive to see the, the traffic coming in out of the, on the special ed side. And then I've been fortunate enough to get to uh, do the uh, mayor proclamation for the early learning center and uh, all the little people that we have up there it's pretty impressive i know uh, that's being a grandparent and a parent the importance of child care if you have uh, working parents i mean it's uh, plays such a vital role in our community and i think we really need to support it that however we can we have in the past and we need to continue to do that and i think that this would be a good topic we can have on our uh, planning station here in a few weeks on some things about the uh, learning center <coughs> and the property building up there and uh, start thinking of ideas that we as a governing body can uh, replace those and, and update it so it would be more efficient and lower utility bills but the 
we got to come up with the initial funding. But uh, I think uh, with what we have, in my opinion, up there, it's uh, a real asset to our community. And we need to, uh, I think we need to continue to move on and, and work with them up there. They're doing things on as main as they can. But I think maybe a goal down the line is maybe each building have its own standalone heating and cooling and eventually let the uh, system go away that's up there that's probably inefficient. Back when natural gas was cheap, it was probably the thing to do. But things have changed. So maybe there, hopefully there might be some grants out there or something that we could look at that would help us with this. That type yeah, of we're still going to pursue that. Yeah, we haven't forgotten. And, and what you just described would be the ideal <coughs> situation. But I, I can tell you that the, the actual, I mean, when, when the system works as it's designed, it's actually fairly efficient. But right. um, when it doesn't, you get what Karen's mm -hmm. talking about. It's either really hot or it's really cold. And you have those frustrations there because they're not in the, they're all in the same system. And, and it's just the way it was designed. It, does that break down every once in a while? It, it does, yeah. That, that's a real problem. Maybe we could about. put electric heat or something in there to back it up. Yeah, yeah, and I think they've kind of done that a little bit on their own. So I mean, yeah. safe electric heat. Right. right. Baseboard or something. Yeah, that's yeah. an idea. Yeah. Electric heat. We, we sell them. We sell them. Yeah. We yeah. should buy yeah. them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, we get a way to do that. So yeah, we're going to keep on trying to do the best we can for that. Just, and just so you're uh, aware of a timeline, um, if, if there's no proposed changes, um, the school board has a meeting next Monday, so they'll look at this then, and then if they have changes, we'll go back and forth, and then we'd like to get it in place before July 1st so that we can get it underway. And then, like I said, the, um, the lease, we have one lease for the two um, daycare buildings Mitchell County Partnership for Children, uh, we at the city actually sent a notice to terminate their current lease because, again, it has some ambiguous language that I didn't, didn't like. So, um, and their grant process kind of is a January deadline, so we're going to look at that in December so that they know their numbers for writing their grants. Um, so we'll, we'll come back with a new lease for them as well. Okay, well, keep us, keep us informed when we move forward. Any other questions for Katie on this? Or Karen? Karen, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Fine, Mr. Next item on the agenda is the comprehensive plan. Karen, did you have a small presentation you want to start oh, off? Oh, very small. But anyway, uh, before I do that, uh, the city attorney's giving you this memo here about the next steps. I don't know if you have any questions for, for anybody else about that. Kind of, I think the key is in the middle of it. Right there, we see the three different alternatives there uh, as far as where the council addresses uh, our fear in the process. You just have a few page memo in there about the options for what the council does next. Is. The, uh, as you remember, the Planning Commission has uh, uh, probably started this process almost two years ago now. Uh, been in the Planning Commission's hands for over a year. Uh, the first hearing they had on this, I believe, was in June last year downstairs. And so they've had it in their hands for at least that long. And uh, they voted in their last session, uh, four to one, to forward the conference and plan as written to the full city council for your consideration and approval or whatever you do, but you really have three options at this point. So <coughs> what I was going to do is kind of show you where we've been, what the comprehensive plan uh, process is about, the, about how we got to this point, and we have members of the planning commission here tonight, uh, they can talk about what their perspective was and how they worked with uh, the staff and with Anna Keelan, our consultants uh, from Lincoln, Nebraska on this, and how we got to this point as we uh, kind of slowly went through updating the conference <coughs> plan that it was, I think was in 1994, so that's how we went through this. So it's been about 20 years or more. Um, we really thought we'd be at the end of 2015 bringing this to the council, but uh, with a lot of changes in back and forth, uh, some folks we, we got to this point. So it's been a little longer than we thought, but you know we still think it's a good comprehensive plan. So so now it's, it's to the council to talk us. So you have to do so, um, of course, not voting on tonight. This is your first look at the first discussion on it. So 
going to start off with a sort of, I'll try to go through as quickly as I can on the PowerPoint view or whatever. I don't know if you have any questions about uh, that memo or the next step or what you're holding play in the whole thing. Um, theoretically, you can vote on it at the next council meeting. As the city attorney said at the last meeting, there's no need for another public hearing. I thought there was. We've had numerous public hearings now with the planning commission. What she did about a month ago was send uh, notice to the townships and the county or whatever <coughs> that we uh, passed it through the planning commission but not to the council at this point. But it's not it's another need for another hearing on this thing. So, um, yeah, it'll just be an ordinance. It'll just be an ordinance. Yeah, yeah adopted by an ordinance is actually why you do that when you get to that point. So, um, you know, that could be in front of you at the next meeting to actually take that. Okay. So that, that's the process for you. So anyway, I thought I'd step through not, not going to bore you too much of this, but um, anyway, so you're going to have to get out of the way, Tom. I thought this going to be... Yeah. <laughs> Just uh, like I said, it's our comprehensive plan. First slide here. What is it? What is it? Comprehensive? Uh, it's a tool. Basically, that, that's all it is. Um, we don't go through this very often, but um, you know, like I said, uh, we should do it more than every once every 20 years. And it gets out of date. Laws change or city changes, whatever. A lot of things change in 20 years, so I don't recommend to go that long. So, but anyway, here it is. Uh, most important thing, of course, is that you know. Things do change when we need to set the top of that. Unfortunately, this thing likes to slide down. I don't even know why. Why plan? There's a lot of reasons for that. Physical growth of the city. Uh, avoid land use conflicts. We kind of stressed that from the beginning. That's one of the important things we're doing. We always had infrastructure. We're just talking about that. You know, we didn't know probably 20 years ago, 1994, that the city was going to acquire the uh, girls. I mean, who knew at that point where it was going to end up in 2010? With, uh, that facility up there, and now you know, we have to plan for that and whatever. So you always have those things coming at you, and then we have you know preserve quality of life, vision for the future, which of course it's hard to do. Um, if you're involved in those things, it's not an easy process. Uh, it's a little small, but uh, the elements that the planning commission has been involved with here, of course, the growth, demographics. We've done uh, a lot, a lot of demographics with Anna Keelan, land use and zoning, of course, transportation, and and. Actually, when we started with a steering committee before the planning, the planning commission got this, we actually broke down the committees and addressed really every one of these things and put that into a document and sent that to the planning commission even before we even got, got close to even writing a comprehensive plan. So all these things were involved from utilities to natural environment to whatever, and we kind of studied those extensively as we went along. Uh, other things, of course, zoning, subdivision, ordinance, which will be coming at you, environmental studies, capital improvement plan, of course, and talked about every year uh, in our goal setting. Public facilities, city strategic plan, and economic development, it's a big, uh, big thing for cities. Um, they, they all, uh, what we did when we started this course, we went through a process where we hired Hannah Keelan out of Lincoln, Nebraska, and they've been with us now for the well, better part of two years. And then we did an, an extensive public participation in this. Of course, newspaper articles, the media covers this pretty extensively, whether it's radio or uh, print media or whatever. And uh, with this thing, we also include the housing study, if you remember, Anna Keelan said they, they were pretty good at those kind of things. So we, we jumped in and we were able to do the housing study right in the middle of this, and there, therefore we were able to qualify for that uh, black grant that we got on the housing, which we were right in the middle of that with the demos. So that, that was 
talked about when we started, but we didn't know we were going to qualify for the grant. So that just came in as a kind of an afterthought, but it was a good afterthought because we were able to uh, obtain that four hundred thousand dollar grant. A lot of demographic collection, like I said, as objectives is kind of new on it. So. so anyway, uh, after reviewing this whole thing, of course, has to uh, conform with standards. State statutes, and that's the statute right there, KSA 12751 b and all that kind of good stuff. Uh, we have a notice of intent to the county commission, the local townships, keeping them up to press on what we're doing here. Uh, conference plan was eventually uh, approved by the planning commission, like I said, they're at their last meeting, and I've now on to the city council for approval. You know all that. Uh, the time horizons on this seem, seem kind of long, so we, we kind of did sort of 10 year and 25 year planning and all that. So it was a little bit unusual in that regard, but we thought, you know, we do kind of a medium term and a long term type of uh, thing. And then we're, you know, really encouraging the uh, planning commission to look at the comprehensive plan uh, and look at it extensively every year. And that, that is part of what the planning commission is supposed to be doing. Now, and then really come back, you know, within 10 years another substantial up. Don't, don't wait another 20 because it's a bit too far off. The benefits of this, uh, reflection in development since the last plan certainly does that. It reflects the current changes in the city, and incorporates the new statutes and legal issues. And like I said, I, you know, the state seems to change laws. They're not changing too many of these lately. They're, they're, uh, they're, they seem to be preoccupied with the budget issues and some other things right now, but they do change their laws quite a bit. Like, uh, consequences, of course, if you don't, uh, you know, you'll, you know, contain the information that's outdated, the plans differ, and, and, and the existing plan will, will not withstand legal challenges if you wait too long, you're just too far out of the gate. Um, options that we considered way back when, simple updates, um, or just a revision or a new plan, and, you know, we really went for the new plan, so we'll, you know, that's how we got there at this point. So that's where the whole plan came from. And what I thought I'd do is throw in years or in the middle of this, where we've been in the past five years as we've been planning and I'm uh, looking at growth here. Public facilities, if you, if you have, uh, if you can kind of remember in the past five years, we've built a new swimming pool, we've uh, we did Mill Street from downtown, all the way going out for uh, cooling tower, uh, water lines, uh, we do have uh, the extension of the you know, and widening of the runway coming up here at the airport. Uh, of course, we're planning to rebuild East Main Street, possibly in the future, even West Main Street. We do that. We did get that housing block, housing block grant for 400000 uh, downtown business grants here around the corner where they are doing masonry work and, uh, and uh, roofing work, even as we speak, possibly here. And of course, the safe routes to school at the 200000 which we're doing with the 2016. Of course, we're rolling along here, K14, uh, taking a little longer than we thought. We thought we'd get that done in 2015. Which you can see the breakdown here, and that's mainly the south and problems we get out there on that and down to K14 that have been longstanding. Uh, but we're dealing with those easement issues there, and so we'll, we'll get there. Uh, like the airports, uh, estimated originally 2.7, and to our cost share, which we're going down here, is going to be extended and widened and just allows bigger, better airplanes to land on our uh, north campus. You know, who knew 20 years ago we get this, but. So far, a new law enforcement center, daycare and early learning that we talked about, new library, hospice shifted into the old library, new housing development uh, that are breaking ground, and more basements out there even as we speak. In the new Dollar General store, they, if you've seen the foundation out there, they poured that about a day, they went out there and poured that. Of course, we have, we have a new community garden center out there, the farmer's market that's up there in the uh, uh, roadside park. So a lot of benefits out of that, of course, there, there's the estimated cost for the streets came in under that and the contract job and they're out there pouring concrete again because we're speaking for the gutter and they're laying some of those roads out there today. So on um, Silver Fox right in the middle of it, they got 12, 12 lots for sale, the infrastructure's in there. They're starting three or four homes here this year. And uh, you know, who knows in the future, uh, you know, we're optimistic that they'll get it all sold. East Main, we're estimating that 1.7. <coughs> <coughs> gutter bond issue here in 2016. Water projects ripped out the old cast iron. Uh, it caused a lot of problems as far as water. We <coughs> got that taken care of. And we still are on track here with Trek Engineering. They're still doing their uh, um, their studies as far as what, what 
cause is, I mean, uh, they still think algae blooms, and we have a number of solutions. <coughs> Power plant, $4.3 million on that um, to upgrade that to meet EPA specs and just take care of the uh, cooling power issue we've had there for a long time. As a housing, $400,000 on that to rehab and uh, demolish, and uh, with a lot of help from regional planning, the minister and then bring it to that kind of Plan is to go ahead and apply for another grant next grant cycle with that kind of law. Uh, this slide, for whatever reason, doesn't <coughs> turn out the way I thought. I don't know why. Uh, it, it, it was on paper, it looked right. But anyway, these are the private businesses that have invested in our community over the past five years, the first national bank. Some of these I didn't remember off the top of my head until I talked to them.